Hey guys, welcome to Troopy Talk. This is a series of videos where we'll be interviewing owners about their cool Troopy setups and mods and doing some gear reviews for our Troopy trips. Alright, hey guys, uh, we're on the banks of the Murray here at Tom's Beach and we thought we'd uh, do a little uh, walk around of the Troopy finally. So, uh, what we're going to do is start at the front and uh, just walk our way around into the back and we'll show you what, uh, what we love about this vehicle. Okay, so under the bonnet here, it's all uh, pretty standard. There's just a couple of things that have been added. So we've got a flash lube diesel uh, pre-filter here on this side. Otherwise, got the standard air box on that side. And coming around here, we've got a catch can that's been added. And here is one of our auxiliary batteries. So this is the original AGM battery that came uh, with the car when we bought it. Uh, this is this was one of two. We've had one taken out. We've left one here. Uh, we're going to use that as an extra sort of crank battery in case this one goes flat. But also at the moment uh, we've got our UHF radio running off that. Uh, otherwise, it's all pretty standard under here. So uh, we'll move on to the front of the car. All right. So the front of the car, pretty standard ARB bull bar here. Uh, into that has been integrated a 17,000 pound Sherpa winch. Uh, so there's the winch box and the winch underneath there. Otherwise, we've got a pretty standard light bar there. We're not actually that interested in super bright lights because we, we don't tend to drive at night at all. By night time, we're very much camped up and uh, enjoying a quiet drink. So we haven't gone for any big flashy lights. And how, how funny that I didn't even see those lights. <laughs> um, when did we buy the Troopy? Uh, about a year and a half ago. year and a half ago. So there's one day I'm like, What's that? Those lights. I've never seen those before. When did they get there? Underneath we've got uh, ARB recovery points, just the standard recovery points under here. Um, and we've also got a port here for another air compressor. Um, that's one of our air compressor ports. On the side of the car we've got the side protection here by Razlar. That integrates really nicely with the ARB bar and we've got the side step there as well. Uh, down here, we've actually staying with our standard uh, Troopy cheese cutters, which we quite like, the steel rims, but we've changed the tyres to some BFG all-terrains, so 235-85s. Uh, suspension's been upgraded, it's got a 3.9 tonne GVM upgrade with levels. So, Whoa! Yeah, we're pretty so, happy with that. Sounds uh, good. Some pretty crucial stuff on the side here, we've got our... Um, We've got our uh, window reflectors from Top Gear to go. Oh, the visors. The visors. Yeah, so when we bought the Troopy, um, the visors came with it because yep. it was fairly kitted out. And uh, we just thought, well, let's just keep them and use them. And they're really good yeah, when you're fantastic. parked in hot sun. Coming along here, uh, we've got a little portable shower here at the moment. We've got a couple of shower options, which is quite nice. This is what we use for a bucket shower. And tell us about that mirror. What so happened? These are the original Clearview mirrors that came with the Troopy when we bought it. So the Troopy was second hand. So the previous owner had put these massive Clearview mirrors on them, which as far as mirrors go, they're fantastic. But they came out this far, uh, which kind of looks stupid. And we don't really have any plans of towing. So I found out that we can actually cut these ones down. So yeah, I've actually, who told you about that? Uh, a guy called Duncan from... We're at Land Cruiser Club. Yeah, that was awesome bit of news because we actually don't love the look. No. And honestly, my personal dislike is how <laughs> they the, ruined the badge. The, they ruined the badge and they put this ugly big stem over the top and we were umming and eyeing whether we should just get them replaced, but they're wired in. Yep. Um, they actually do work well and then we'd be left with all these holes that would have to be patched up so, so cut, anyway so I cut 90 millimeters out of this and made them shorter so actually that I think that actually look really yeah, good yeah that, that's so much better and tell us about the sidestep that irks me a bit oh uh, the angle irks Mrs Fritz yeah. but I, I quite like it we've applied look, a little bit of extra grippy tape there just yeah because it was slippery. slippery I thought they put it on wrong <laughs> I'm like, why is this on an angle? Uh, you know, why isn't it flat? Because it's, you know, you sort of have to balance on the edge to get in. But anyway, I'm getting used to it. Yeah. Sorry about the background cockatoos. We've been living with them all week. Uh, on the sides, we've got the Top Gear to Go um, fly screens, which are absolute gold. Um, oh, if you don't have those gold. on your Troopy, 
I'm not sure what you're doing. Yeah, they're just magnetic. Check this out so you can just sort yep. of, yeah, they come away nice and easily and then they stick back on straight away. And here we've got our Max Trax table, which doubles as a Max Trax holder. So that's by Expedition Center. So it's a really good extra little table that we use for uh, making coffee or tea or uh, we did the washing on here the other day. Uh, and it just pops up there and it's held pretty rigidly like that. And then coming along the back here, uh, we've recently added another swing arm over here for an extra jerry can uh, that just holds a bit of extra water for us. Um, we generally use that for sort of outside washing up, rinsing off feet, bits and pieces. And then this bad boy over here is just a, a big aluminium box which contains a bunch of shoes and a few tools and bits and pieces. So stuff that you don't really want inside. So that's worked out really well on this side. I also carry a little broom because someone likes to sweep up. Yeah, I like to sweep up and you can get cobwebs off the top and yep. stuff like that. Cool. Oh, and then the awning's open today. Yeah, so above us, giving us fantastic shade at the moment, is the 30-second awning. And it probably only does take about 30 seconds to put up. Um, takes a couple of minutes to put away, but we're getting a bit better at it um, every time. Uh, it does seem to provide pretty good shade, as well as um, it's pretty resistant to wind as well. So when the wind's up, it flaps around a little bit, but uh, we've only had to peg it down a couple of times. Yeah, we don't love using it in strong wind. No, no. But even now, uh, we used it in the rain. Yes. Once and, and it, it, it was good. It, yeah. it leaked in like a couple of spots and yeah. the water definitely, definitely pools. Yeah. Um, but I think that's unavoidable. So this is kind of our standard camp sort of setup. We've got a sea gear mat here to keep the dust and crap away. Uh, two camp chairs, the table, which we've just picked up. It's a great little Coleman table. It's super sturdy. Uh, it's got a little bit of grippy stuff on it, which is great. And, and we love that it's grey. And we love that it's yeah, grey. And it's got the kind of got line. this little slimline look to it. And in the back here is where I do most of the cooking. So we've got a little drop-down table, again by Expedition Centre. Um, we run an induction cooker, I'd say 95% of the time, uh, because inside we've got two 100 amp hour lithium batteries that are connected to a 2000 watt inverter, uh, and they are being charged by um, two, I think, 125 watt panels on the roof, and we'll show you that later. So induction cooker's working quite well. Um, we haven't had any issues so far. One thing it doesn't do very well is uh, do our little coffee pot. So we've got a little backup little gas cooker for that. But otherwise I do pretty much all of the cooking out here. Um, paper towel holder, and then under here is an extra little pouch which then folds up for extra stuff like a splatter guard and bits and pieces and whatever. Yeah, that silicon splatter guard is a new addition and it's really good. It is gold. Yeah. And then on the side here? On this side, just another little pouch for some wet, um, you know, barbecue wipes, brush, very important, sunscreen, always need that. And uh, show off our curtains. So these uh, <laughs> camo curtains, we, well, we actually sewed these. Uh, they have little magnets you in them. You sewed them. All oh, right, I sewed them. Um, so they've got little very um, impressive. magnets on them, so we, they come on, on and off really easily. And uh, they just stick there, which is kind of cool because when we're driving, if I want to see it, look outside, I just pull them down on one side and then it, that's yeah, easy. Yeah, just show how you can just sort of drop them down and it's so easy and Boom. off we go. Boom, off we yeah. go, we can see outside. Yeah. And on the back here, just some important stickers. There's our <laughs> prototype. <laughs> uh, Namibia, we love Namibia, and a couple of uh, a couple of other YouTubers Chrissy that we follow. Chrissy Dirt Sunrise and Overland uh, Travelers. Land Travelers. So here's this is, let me show you, yeah, laminated. Yeah. That sticky tape's holding on well, isn't it? Working like a champion. Yeah. All right. Okay, so on this side we've just got a, a spare wheel here with a Bush Ranger bag, just for usual rubbish and bits and pieces. Um, the bag's pretty sturdy. Pretty happy with it so far. No complaints. Coming around this side, um, we've got another um, air compressor port down here. So we've got one on one at the front, one at the back, which is great. Uh, little air compressor lives under the front seat. 
Um, this is just where the water goes in. So this is our freshwater tank filler. Uh, we've got 90 litres of uh, freshwater tank underneath the car. Um, and the actual rear uh, fuel tank or diesel tank has been replaced with a uh, the original 90 litre tank has been replaced with a 150 litre tank so in total we can carry 240 litres of diesel which I'm sure will be more than enough to go anywhere plus 90 litres of water plus the other 20 litres of water on, in the jerry can on the other side so all in all we're pretty well set up um, on this side we also have our quick pitch um, ensuite uh, this opens up really quickly and basically just produces a nice little square ensuite space if you want to have a shower uh, or you need to use the toilet. It also means that we can grab the hose, which is the kitchen hose, and uh, put that out here and use that as a shower head. So that's our second shower option. So that's option. our second shower option. So one, one other feature in the back here is the Top Gear to Go fly screen. Uh, it's just a magnetic fly screen that sort of opens like that, which is really simple. Uh, again. We, we absolutely love it. Um, we're thinking about going, changing it to the one that splits in the middle, only because we've got a box here and we've got some cabinetry over there. So, but apart from that, you know, it keeps all the bugs out. It's fantastic. We also have a reversing camera up here with two cameras, one that looks down, one that looks back. So it's pretty handy. And otherwise, that's pretty much it for the back here. Okay, so I'll show you guys um, the inside of our teeny tiny house on wheels. Um, I might as well start with the box that I'm sitting on. So Peter made this. Um, when we bought it, um, the lady had a little porta potty here, but we actually didn't like it because we don't like all those chemicals in the toilets and we hate emptying them and all of that. So Peter made this awesome box. Bit of carpet on top. It's totally secured um, to the side. And then inside we have a bunch of stuff and in this gap here is where our portable fold-up toilet lives so this doubles as excellent storage with pouches on the outside this is also where we step to get up onto our bed which is really cool and during the day if we're eating inside or at night time because the insects are unbearable then we sit here check this out we have an awesome little table it's really really simple setup and one of us sits here and the other one sits where mr. Fritz is sitting behind the um, camera at the moment on the fridge and freezer so this is really great as you can see we have a ridiculous amount of bench space all of that there um, often we just have this down which means we have really good um, space we can get dressed, we can get ready in the mornings, and uh, we can completely stand up, which is amazing. The sink is probably one of my favorite features. I love that we can do dishes. I love that I can wash my face here in the morning and brush my teeth at night. We have a water filter here for drinking water that Peter put in. And then here's our little, this little, this is the pull-out hose, which we can hang out the window as well, um, if we want to have a rinse off or a shower out. So anyway, we changed this. There was a really pathetic little sink here, which was totally useless. We got one of these instead. So we've got somewhere where we can, um, you know, thaw meat out and drip stuff and, you know, open cans of tuna and whatever like that. So this is really cool. Um, everything here does double duty. So this is where <laughs> I hang the tea towels off the strap, which is the pull down strap for the roof. The light, which moves anywhere, is where the toilet roll lives during the day which is fantastic bench is awesome we have a very simple um, aluminium frame and it's modular now this went all the way across to here but on the end here we had just really awkward space difficult to get to little spots so we decided one day to chop that off make it a shorter bench and then create an awesome spot in the corner which I'll show you in a minute. Um, we have boxes, that's all our kitchen stuff, more kitchen stuff. We have these awesome pouches for utensils and cutlery. So there is pretty much 
zero noise when we're on the road because we can't stand anything rattling around. And do those boxes fall out? They have never ever fallen out. They actually, there's actually a lip here, mm -hmm. so they kind of they have lids, and we can put a big strap around them if we ever go on really insane roads, but. You know, that's not normally what we do. And down the bottom, tools and mats and, you know, our little cooking stove. So everything's really at hand and easy to get to. Um, as you can see, we have more of these awesome little magnetic curtains. So they just go up really easily. They just hook on. And um, we often have that side up permanently because there's not a great deal of window there and then our little um, cutlery it's really cool so Peter's just stuck some velcro up there so during the day that's permanently up so this is that corner that we redid it was it's such a good idea so this pop-up bin folds down <laughs> to nothing weighs nothing and in here, well at the moment we have three bottles of wine and our jackets that we needed in robe and a few bits and pieces and the toiletry bag, but that's a daytime storage and a nighttime storage. When we're on the road, it's on the ground um, and during the day it sits in the corner. So previously this was bench, which was just ridiculous. Now we have a box here. So here's the box. Peter built that so we, we reused the original table or bench frame. Oh, field guide to birds in Australia. And there we go. That's some um, very sexy setup there I'm sure. Electronica. And oh, the two uh, lithium yeah. batteries are underneath that. Yeah. So nice and safely out of the way. Safe, secure, out of the way. And then this awesome box. I'll show you in a minute. The reason we did that is because then you can sit here during the day. So if we're ever in a sea, how's that? So we can stretch, stretch out. You can actually lie down here as well, obviously with your knees bent, but it's a really awesome little spot. And this just goes back there when we're not using it out of the way. And um, these two are obviously our fridge and freezer very luxurious lots of space and we just we just velcroed these cushions on but we probably actually they're not velcroed it's double-sided tape which isn't fantastic because they do wear off eventually so we're gonna stitch velcro to it side is this memory foam cushion which honestly doesn't weigh anything and then we just covered them up with these didn't cost much but it makes a huge difference and what we do with these is we if we're stuck in the truck because of the weather um, we just we actually pop these on the ground we sit on that and then we have some cushions that we put down here and we can both sit on the ground and stretch our legs out and you know watch a video or do something like that um, so amazing um, use of space for such a tiny area we can sit on the ground sit up here sit at the table we have a lounge we have a kitchen we have a bathroom and we have a bedroom which is just above my head and what's on the roof here this thing the yep. pouches yeah these are really cool um camp cover storage but we've put it up on the roof we saw someone had it up there and we thought that was a good idea i think andrew, andrew. Yeah. Oh, it's so good because we have bathers, head torches and all our towels. And then I do other things like I just pop pegs there and I hang things and we can dry things there easily. And we start collecting all our laundry in that big end one. And then I guess the last thing to show you is just where we didn't know where to put all these visors because we just hated shifting them all the way all the time. So. We just pop these bands up and we just stick them all in there and um, it's out of the way and works really well. And then I hang things off it as well and stick our sunglasses through through there and yeah, that's pretty much it. Here's the fly screens, the magnetic fly screen, which is just a godsend. Honestly, I think I would go mad if we didn't have these because 
the amount of insects you'd get in here would be ridiculous. And then we also have little um, magnetic. I have, they, uh, this is just from Bunnings, but I don't like having that hole there because I think that something might crawl in. So we just chuck one of those on and then we hang things off it during the day. Yep. And over here we also got some um, light, also has USB charging, and which is great. Night. We usually charge stuff there at night. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, bed space up here. Um, as you can see, we've got quite big uh, windows on either side, which is great for looking out first thing in the morning and also for looking up at the stars. So it's a bit of a tight space, but I'll try and show. So there's our pillows. Uh, there's the rest of the bed. Look, it's not a giant space, but uh, fortunately, neither are, we're not giants either, so we, we fit up here quite well. I think it's about 126 centimetres wide, or 128 centimetres wide. Okay, here's the space at the end of the bed, which is really good. We can both stand here next to each other, and there we stand up on the um, box. So this is the... I won't pull it all the way down because the sun's actually right opposite. This is a huge window and then that's it and it's actually really easy just just kind of one knee up and you're up. And what's the good thing about at night? That you can get down. Yeah so Peter usually sleeps on this side and if I need to go down in the middle of the night for a pee because I have the little toilet set up um, then I can just kind of get straight past him step down and then bye <laughs> okay so along the edge of our furniture here or the cabinetry we have um this whatever you call it with the holes in it it's mm -hmm. really lightweight really versatile we've got an axe there we've got the red arc thingy battery management system battery management system and our water level indicator yep. system and these really awesome pouches with a bunch of things that we use every single day and then on this side this is the box this is a total mobile unit so we can take it out completely when we're not traveling and if we want to transport something in the van van sorry in in the truck um, but otherwise as I said before this is storage box seat step up and then we've added these um, awesome little pouches as well and our fire striker which is great so we also have a carpet here which is kind of really cool it just you know it, you just put it on with a press stud mm -hmm. and Underneath is just plywood, so we can um, pull that out and give it a wash anytime. And I also have a little vacuum on board, so um, I can give it a quick vacuum if I need to. Okay, so this is what it looks like when the bed's down and the roof is down. It's still really, really spacious. I can kind of get up to here, um, and that's it. That's, that's all the space. And another thing I wanted to show you guys was the bucket buckets are also our wardrobe so i've got all my clothes in here behind the buckets there's space for other stuff and what we love about this system is that when you get home you just take the bucket inside you unpack and then you pop it in the garage and then when you're going on your next trip same deal take it inside pack it in slide it in done and the top row is permanent so that's all our kitchen stuff and things that stay and the other two boxes are for food okay so we have some more sneaky storage in here so once you pop the table up which is a very very complex system as you can see we have these pouches here this was all one long piece which was crazy because you couldn't get to it so we snipped it here and you yeah, come around the corner what's in this orange bag snatch strap and rain jackets so we we cut it here we cut it here so we can flap it up more stuff in there extra tissues and things we cut it down here as well and this is where i have tissues paper towels rubbish bags and things like that. It's a really cool little extra storage spot. Okay. Yeah. So I hope you guys um, enjoyed our little walkthrough and hopefully you found it um, interesting, maybe even helpful. 
Um, we're still learning to live with the truck. Uh, we haven't had it for a very long time and because of lockdowns we haven't really been able to travel a lot. But we do have a three month trip coming up. Yep. Which will be amazing. We can't wait. It's going to be very interesting to see how we go living out of this truck for three months. Um, obviously, we'll keep you posted through our YouTube videos. Yep, so lots more uh, trippy trip videos coming up on that trip, uh, but also from the last two weeks. But also coming up, apart from the walkthrough on this vehicle here, we're going to do some walkthroughs on a couple of other trippies uh, that are a lot different to this. Um, and we'll also be doing a comparison video between the pop top on our vehicle compared to the Aldi Cab Hercules pop top on another Sandy yeah. Talk trippy. Yeah, so basically it will be a, a comparison video between the Molgo and the Alucad pop tops just so people can see the differences and what the advantages and disadvantages are of both um, because there's actually not a lot of information out there, no. not a lot of visual footage of these sorts of things so we thought that might be really useful for other people who are looking to do builds. Yeah so we'll do an inside and outside comparison of the two uh, versions of the pop top and we'll put that up as a trippy talk video Yeah. and uh, that's about it. So just in wrapping up so what are the features that you love about this vehicle? Oh you know the most amazing thing for me is that we have a capable vehicle that can go most places really um, and it is a, a real little house on wheels like it's properly set up for touring that to me is just the ultimate we can live inside and we can sleep inside and it carries all our stuff and we can pretty much go anywhere with it so that that is amazing I, every time we're in it I'm just constantly amazed that we can um, you know that we have such a clever little touring setup because I, I wouldn't like to be living outdoors all the time. Sometimes the weather is just truly crap and sometimes the bugs are truly crap as well. So it's nice that we have a little um, secure, comfortable space inside. Yeah, what about you? Uh, what do I like the most? I love driving the trip. I just really enjoy driving it. Every time I'm driving it, whether I'm driving to work or whatever, just driving around, it's just fun. And uh, it's just, it's, it's like, I feel like I'm going on an adventure every time I'm driving it and I know it's a really capable truck and it'll get us anywhere in Australia that we want to go. Um, what do I dislike? Well, not I very much. I really dislike much of I all. love my trippy. Yeah, and you know, the here's a funny thing. <laughs> I never knew troopies even existed. I didn't even know they were a thing until 17 months ago when we saw this advertised on carsales.com. I'm like, God, that looks cute. I love it. Like such a safari vehicle look. And then we saw what was inside. I'm like, my God, you know, this woman's put everything in there. She's, she's thought of everything um, beautifully kitted out. And we just had to buy it. Yeah best decision of our life. Yeah, absolutely amazing because there'll be lots of um, adventures to come and we've learned a lot and we've actually met some amazing people already just through um, having a troopy. So troopy life is cool. Really, really cool and it's a it's a community that we never knew existed. So yeah, good, good times. Excellent. Thanks very much guys. Uh, stay tuned for some more troopy talks and more troopy trips. And I uh, hope you like our videos. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. All right, so we thought we'd shoot the cab while we're actually driving. Uh, so starting on the passenger side, we've got our uh, armrest and cup holder by Connect 4x4. Uh, one of my mates, Richard Taylor, actually manufactures these. We reckon they're a really great product. Coming over here, we've got Troopy Monkey, who's our mascot. And then I'll just dive to the center console area. So we've left this pretty stock because we actually like all the little um, pockets to put our wallets and keys and bits and pieces. Uh, there's our camera bag, microphone that we can actually just pick up and move away. And we don't want to build this area out with too much stuff. Uh, coming up onto the dash, uh, we've got our UHF radio, which is uh, very sneakily held on with some Velcro at the moment. 
and the same with my mobile phone. Uh, I know it looks a little bit rudimentary, but it seems to work. Haven't come up with a better solution just yet. Across on the driver's side, again, another Connect 4x4 armrest, which Mrs. Fritz is demonstrating beautifully. In the corner, we've got our hammer maps. I'm not completely sold on that. And up there, we've got our TPMS system. We also have a number of pouches at the top here just to, uh, that holds our fly nets and PLB. Uh, there is our rear vision camera and another bit of netting up here. And that's about it for the inside of the cab. Well, I am